All right, we'd like to welcome you to another edition of Spotlight on Long Island Schools here on 103.9 FM, LI News Radio, and LINewsradio.com. You can also like our Facebook page at Spotlight on LI Schools and maybe suggest your school to be in our Spotlight next. I'm your host, my name is Bob Vecchio, and this week our Spotlight takes us to Oyster Bay East Norwich Central Schools, and in particular the Oyster Bay High School, home of the Bayman. And we're going to be talking with the students that have been involved in a great college awareness program, and we'll talk about all the benefits that they've had through the trips that they've taken over the last couple of years to various college campuses to get ideas of to where to go to school for themselves. This initiative was started by Dr. Dennis O'Hara, the high school principal. And Dr. O'Hara, we're going to start off with you and tell us a little bit about the program, how it got started, and why you started it up at Oyster Bay. Well, hey, Bob, first, thank you very much for having us. We're really excited to be here. Um, I just, you know, we're really, really proud of this program at Oyster Bay High School because we believe that it closes aspiration gaps for students, and that's really the drive behind the program. The idea is to take students to visit colleges beginning as early as grade 8 so that they see places that they may not have seen on their own or they may not yet have seen with their families. And the philosophy behind our program is very simply that if we bring them to the colleges, then we know they'll see themselves on those campuses in the future. And seeing yourself at a place makes it tangible and makes it possible for you. And when they come back from the trips, it enables us to keep reminding them. And when uh, a student may backslide in class or a student may miss school, we can bring them in their mind right back to the visit to the University of Pennsylvania or the visit to Villanova or St. Joseph's University. And we can say to them, you said you love that school. And if that's the case, then make sure you keep working hard. And it changes the whole conversation. We're no longer people that are just telling them what to do, but now we're people that are helping them envision themselves and helping them see their future. So it's so like, as you have described it in the past in some articles I've seen, it's like an ignition for them to kind of get them goal-oriented, goal-setting, so that academics matter, homework matters, and obtaining those goals to get to your dream school, especially if it was one of the campuses that you visited, is a real good incentive because it's tangible, you touched it, you saw it, and you kind of have an idea what it's all about. I would say you're exactly right. It, it, it just really it demystifies the process for them. Initially, when we started the program, people were worried. They thought maybe taking students in eighth grade to visit colleges would increase stress. But my argument was it'll be exactly the opposite. It'll really give them a roadmap. When we visit the colleges, like I said, as, as young as grade eight, they hear from admissions counselors, and, and they get a guided tour of the campuses. And it's very different when, uh, when your parent tells you you should do your homework. Every eighth grade student expects that. But they don't really trust it. You know, They just think that's what parents do. But they'll trust it when it's coming from a person who's making a decision whether or not they're going to attend their school. So it has a little bit of weight. That's exactly right. And, a, and as a funny uh, anecdote, our very first ever trip to the University of Pennsylvania, we were fortunate enough to meet with the director of admissions and take a group photo with him. And I introduced him to the eighth graders as the man who will be reading their applications. And his response was, that's true. And when you apply, include this photo. There you go. Okay, we have an interesting collection of students here, several different grades, and including an alumni of Oyster Bay High School. But first, we're going to start with the brother-sister combination here. We have Justine, who's in the 12th grade, and her younger brother, Chris, who, well, Chris, you've taken the program in 8th grade, right? You went on a trip in 8th grade, and your older sister has been on two trips. So we're going to start with you, Chris. What did you expect before you took the trip? What was your biggest surprise, and what was the favorite uh, spot that you visited? Well, I expected from the college trip that I would be going to see a bunch of colleges with my classmates and really like getting a feel for what it's like to look at a college. And it was a total success. Like tri Looking at all these colleges and like hearing from the admissions counselors really got in my head like what they're looking for and exactly how how like what you can do in high school to make the to get accepted at these to make college. the difference of getting in or not getting in and what were yeah, some exactly. of the schools that you visited Chris well we went to Lehigh UPenn uh, St. Joseph's 
my favorite school would have to be UPenn because it's an Ivy League. The campus is just beautiful. Has nothing and to do with the Philly cheesesteaks, right? <laughs> it actually does have a little okay, bit. Okay, all right. That's I appreciate the honesty. And, Justine, you have taken advantage of this program twice now. So describe for us the difference when you first went as an eighth grader and then what your expectations were when you went as a tenth grader. Well, in eighth grade, it was definitely more laid back. But then, like, in 10th grade, we went to, I think, like, 13 colleges wow. in about three, three days. So it was more intense, a lot of um, traveling, and a lot of sleeping on the bus. <laughs> but um, it was definitely, like, a re-motivation to it, – it kept me going because after a while, it's, like – you get kind of tired, but it like re-inspired me. Like this is my goal. Like this is I have to keep it up, keep up the good work, and I'm really gonna get into the college that I so want to. So it inspired you a little bit in eighth grade. So mm -hmm. you went through eighth grade and ninth grade, and you started getting like ah oh, whatever. But then tenth grade, you visited mm -hmm. thirteen colleges, and I believe it's in five days, right? What was your favorite visit out of those thirteen schools? My favorite visit was definitely um, UVA. I'm actually applying there this fall, and I just like loved the school. It's a beautiful, beautiful campus, and I really like the idea that um, it's very like student run. There's like a strong student government, and I got the feeling that the student body was very in charge of like how the school was, and they had a very strong student run honor code, and it just felt like a very good school environment to be in. And I also like that it was like. Te it's test optional so if you're not a good test taker like you still have the chance to like get into a very prestigious school so. that, that's an awesome concept now dana again you're a high school senior over there in oyster bay and once again i want to remind folks you're listening to the spotlight on long island schools here on 1039 fm li news radio and linewsradio.com so again you've taken two tours Obviously, you took the eighth grade tour where Philly cheesesteaks were very popular along with some of the other campuses that you visited and the 13 schools in five days. I mean, that, that's quite a busy, ambitious schedule, but yet it seems like you guys get a lot, of ad, a lot out of that in the five days. What was the thing that you walked away with after those five days visiting those 13 schools? What was the most important thing you probably walked away with? Um, I think when you visit that number of schools... Um, it really gives you an idea of what you want, especially now looking back, now that I'm a senior, I'm looking for the schools that I want to apply to. Um, having those schools as like a base or a foundation to say, oh, this is what I like, this is what I don't like, um, it definitely helps a lot when it comes time because it's hard to just say, oh my God, there's all these colleges in the United States, which ones am I going to end up applying to, which ones are going to be the best for me? So I think that that definitely helped it helped me determine what size school, where I wanted to go. Um, for me, I fell in love with the University of Pennsylvania. And from in eighth grade, I fell in love with that school. So now that I'm applying, it helps to say, I've visited your school. I visited there like four times now for different reasons. But to be say, I fell in love with your school in the eighth grade. And I worked hard my entire academic career to get into your school, and here I am now. So That's a great story. Now, Riley, you're in ninth grade, so you're just fresh off your eighth grade trip, so to speak, and you're kind of going down that path where grades matter, transcripts matter, and you're trying to navigate which way you want to go. What was your biggest takeaway from the eighth grade trip, and what are you looking forward to on the second trip? Um, I learned that there's a school for everyone, and you won't necessarily love every school. But I'm really looking forward to looking at more colleges. Over the summer, I saw a few more, and I started looking at colleges online. Because and, and of you, you, you mentioned a great point. You, you kind of find out not only what you do like, what you don't like. What was one of the things that when you toured the schools that maybe you didn't know you didn't like, but after visiting some of the campuses, you said, you know what, this just isn't for me, so I'm going to look for something else. What was one of those things that you would say, makes you shy away from a school necessarily i like when the campus has like a lot of green space so like you can sit out on the lawn during the school year and study that's great now we have an alumni here she graduated in 2010 and we're going to get a little bit more into your story on, when we come back from the break but paula talk to us about your experience uh, when you visited the colleges and tell us what your favorite college was and, by the way, where you're attending now. 
Correct. Um, I visited a few schools, CUNY, local, and St. John's, as well as Stony Brook. Um, when I came to this country as an English learner student, you ver- pretty much don't have any direction. You don't know where you're going. You don't know what options are available for you. So at the time when I went with our ESL teacher, English as a Second Language, she took us to Stony Brook, and I completely fell in love with the campus. I love how they made it seem for me it would be a great opportunity to attend there and that even though I am an English language learner, I could still attend the school based on my grades and merit. And lo and behold, you're attending which school right now? I just graduated from Stony Brook. Just graduated from Stony Brook (laughs) University, and we have more of that great story. We're going to talk about the affordability of the trips, and we're also going to demystify the myth about private school versus public uh, colleges and how it's really kind of affordable when we come back on Spotlight on Long Island Schools on 103.9 FM, LI News Radio. We'd like to welcome you back to another edition of Spotlight on Long Island Schools here on 103.9 FM, LI News Radio, and linewsradio.com. And don't forget to check out our Facebook page, Spotlight on LI Schools on Facebook. Like our page, suggest a program or a club or an activity that your school district is doing, and maybe your school will be part of our Spotlight in future segments. We are talking with the folks from Oyster Bay High School, home of the Bayman. It's a K-12 through public school with about 1,600 students uh, enrolled in the district. And the high school actually houses grades 7 through 12. And we've been talking with some students from the Oyster Bay High School about a college awareness program that actually takes and visits multiple, multiple schools, not just once, but twice. First time in 8th grade, second time in 10th grade, and it really helps these students crystallize where they want to go, what they need to do to get there, and some of their great experiences that they've had along the way. At the break, we were speaking with Paula. She's an alumni from 2010, and she told us that she just graduated from Stony Brook University, and it was the college awareness program at Oyster Bay High School that really helped her when she came into this country, going to Oyster Bay High School, College Awareness Program helped lead her to Stony Brook, and now she's a graduate of not only Oyster Bay, but also Stony Brook. So, Paula, tell us about the first time you entered the walls of Oyster Bay School District and the high school. What did you expect you would be doing after you left there as a graduate? Well, at the time when I was a new student, I didn't know much of what I was going to do. I was a little bit shy of my 16th birthday, so at the time I was a little mad that I was in a country where I didn't speak English, where I didn't know what I was doing, where I didn't know anybody, and I came across wonderful teachers and students that spoke my language, people that expected more from me, and that gave me great motivation to continue and have a goal when I graduated high school. So the experience of being around people that want you to succeed, I think it's incredibly important for a newcomer to this country. It would be tough for any 16-year-old just Mm -hmm. to change schools, much less countries and schools. So you went on to go to Stony Brook University, which was part of the college awareness uh, initiative that you were exposed to. What did you major in and what was your uh, degree in when you graduated? I major in Hispanic languages and literature. So I graduated with a degree in secondary education for Spanish teaching. Very good. And what are your plans now that you're a graduate? Well, right now I'm taking my New York State certifications and I'm applying for a job looking around to become a Spanish teacher. All right. So you will help out others as they have helped out you along your journey. And Stony Brook was the place you landed after Oyster Bay. And it was, like you said, one of the places that you had seen during the college awareness it was exposed to. And that's what you fell in love with. And achieved your goal by graduating there. So congratulations to you. Thank you so much. Okay, so Dr. O'Hara, let's, you know, a lot of parents are probably listening and say, you know, this is great that you take the kids on a five-day tour, 13 schools, eighth grade, maybe you go down into the Pennsylvania area. But holy cow, how much does a program like that cost? Because it's a lot of money if you're going to do something like that. So talk about the affordability of this awareness program. Well, Bob, we, we make the program very affordable by bringing the entire grade at one time. So if our school is small, but for example, we travel to Philadelphia for three days with 104 eighth graders. Because we have so many students with us at, the, at that time, we're able to spread the cost for the coach buses and the cost for the hotels and the cost for the sporting events and the cost for the museums over the entire group. So our students get to see four colleges over three days for the cost of about $400. 
And well, that includes buses, hotels, and all the incidentals, $400 per student. Buses, hotels, meals, even some souvenir T-shirts, the ones you see them wearing today, for example. And when they're in 10th grade, again, similar numbers, it's a five-day trip. We visit 11 to 12 schools typically, and that trip costs $700 per student. And we travel to Maryland, uh, Baltimore, Washington, D.C. We travel to Virginia. We travel to North Carolina and return home. And when I explain this program to parents, I challenge them to take even just one of their children to visit 11 schools and make it happen for $700. And, and a lot of parents who do take their kids on college tours, I guarantee you spend a lot more than that and probably don't even hit a quarter of the schools that you visit. So this actually provides parents with an opportunity in a very structured, safe environment to get the kids the exposures that they need while they're busy home filling out all the paperwork to make it happen. Yes, that's true. It saves them time and um, it pays dividends that we initially didn't even expect. So Dana touched upon it earlier when she said she learned what types of schools she liked. And Riley mentioned, for example, that she likes schools that have a lot of green spaces. When we design our program, we intentionally take students to schools that are very small, to major universities with a tremendous student body. We take them to urban settings. We take them to schools that are in suburban settings. And it's always amazing to me that students just feel at home the instant they set on a set foot on a certain type of campus. And what that does is when they begin their search in earnest, they tell their parents, I only want to go to city schools. Or they tell their parents, we don't need to look at any city schools. I already know I don't like that. Takes all the guesswork right out of it. So now, along with the affordability piece, I, I understand is a fundraising piece. And I know our seniors in the room have been involved with some past fundraising activities. Now... You guys get a little creative to raise some money. Why don't you tell what you're probably what was your most favorite fundraiser for your college awareness trip? The best one was probably when we taped Dr. O'Hara to a wall in the cafeteria. <laughs> wait, wait. When you say you taped him to a wall, you, you gotta you gotta kinda describe that for us. We had a lot of a lot of duct tape. Duct tape fixes <laughs> everything. I'm telling yeah. you. So you duct taped your high school principal to a wall. How far off the ground was he? A few feet. A few, yeah. <laughs> it few started feet. with the stool, <laughs> and you could buy a piece of duct tape for a dollar, and then you put the duct tape on, and then when we thought we had enough, we took the stool away, and he was just kind of hanging there, stuck on the How wall. How much money did you raise duct taping your principal? To, I've never heard anything like this before. I'm not sure. I think we raised a lot, though. <laughs> yeah, there was a lot of duct tape. I, I actually went to elementary school with Dr. O'Hara. I'm sure a bunch of alumni would love to come back and duct tape him to a wall and help you guys raise some money. Maybe we can work that out the next time around. Riley, uh, again, you have taken your tour in eighth grade. You're going to be taking it again in tenth grade. What do you think is going to be your biggest inspiration or what, what school are you looking forward to going to on the tenth grade trip? Or what school do you hope to? What what would be your dream school at this point? Um, right now, the College of East Stroudsburg College is of where East I want to go. College of East Stroudsburg, yeah. And East Stroudsburg is a real interesting place right there in the Poconos. And they've got some really fantastic programs and a lot of green space and some mountains and the Delaware River, right? So it's, it's a pretty neat place over there in the Delaware Water Gap area, correct? Yeah. So the College of East Stroudsburg and close enough to go home in case you want to see the folks on the weekend, right? Yeah. So, Chris, you're in 10th grade. You, you've taken the trip. You've taken another one. When does this uh, trip take place for the 10th graders? It's in January. It's in January. So, in, in the throes of the winter, you're going to be taking five days, spending it up close and personal with Dr. O'Hara and some other folks. What school are you looking forward to visiting? I'm really looking forward to visiting UVA and probably revisiting UPenn to get a closer look at it. Okay. And for our high school seniors, what do you think is the most important lesson that you learned over these two trips that you think has really prepared you well for your college experience? Dana, we'll start with you. What do you think is the most important thing you learned during these trips that you're going to take into the schools that you go to? Um, I think that one of the most important things that I've learned is you're never, you're never going to know what you're going to fall in love with. Um, I didn't think that I wanted to go to school near a city um, just because I was scared. Um, and when you think of college, you think of like, you know, big green campus, mountains, whatever. But, you know, when I visited the University of Pennsylvania, I was like, oh, my God, this is fantastic. You know, you, you have your small or like green center and then around it, this 
bustling city that's so exciting. So that definitely changed the way I thought. Great. Justine, how about you? The most important thing I learned was like the level of extra extracurricular activities and academics that you really had to keep up throughout the four years in high school. So to make your application yeah. very competitive to get in, right? Yeah, because it's a lot more work than like you really think it is when you're just in eighth grade and when you go and you see all the things that you have to do to get into college it's really motivational and like inspires you to do as many things as you can when you're in high school and as we wrap up here paula what advice would you give all these students before they enter enter the college life what is the one thing they should always keep in mind when they're in school they should always go for their grades they should participate in extracurricular things um i think it's very important to figure out what you would like to do once you figure out what you want to do there are millions of options out there um there are many schools for everybody as riley said before there is a school for everyone out there so once you figure out what you want to do the options are out there for you and what best advice would you give incoming freshmen as far as definitely do not do this your first year in college do not slack on your homework. It is very important to keep up and never fall behind on work. Well, listen, we want to thank all the folks here from Oyster Bay School District and the Oyster Bay High School for giving us some time to talk about the College Awareness Program. Many thanks to Dr. Dennis O'Hara for this program that he started along with his colleagues. And we want to thank you for tuning in once again to Spotlight on Long Island Schools here on 103.9 FM, LI News Radio and LINewsradio.com. I'm Bob Vecchio. Tune in every week, every Saturday morning at 10.30 a.m. And also be sure to like us on Facebook for Spotlight on Long Island Schools. We'll talk to you next week. Thank you.